Mandarin listen, simplified Chinese, guan hua traditional Chinese, guan hua pinyin, guan hua, literally, speech of officials, is a group of related varieties of Chinese spoken across most of northern and southwestern China. The group includes the Beijing dialect, the basis of standard Mandarin or standard Chinese. Because Mandarin originated in North China and most Mandarin dialects are found in the north, the group is sometimes referred to as the northern dialects, Beifang Hua Beifang Hua. Many local Mandarin varieties are not mutually intelligible. Nevertheless, Mandarin is often placed first in lists of languages by number of native speakers with nearly a billion. Mandarin is by far the largest of the seven or ten Chinese dialect groups, spoken by 70% of all Chinese speakers over a large geographical area, stretching from Yunnan in the southwest to Xinjiang in the northwest and Heilongjiang in the northeast. This is generally attributed to the greater ease of travel and communication in the North China Plain compared to the more mountainous south, combined with the relatively recent spread of Mandarin to frontier areas. Most Mandarin varieties have four tones. The final stops of Middle Chinese have disappeared in most of these varieties, but some have merged them as a final glottal stop. Many Mandarin varieties, including the Beijing dialect, retain retroflex initial consonants, which have been lost in southern dialect groups. The capital has been within the Mandarin area for most of the last millennium, making these dialects very influential. Some form of Mandarin has served as a national lingua franca since the 14th century. In the early 20th century, a standard form based on the Beijing dialect, with elements from other Mandarin dialects, was adopted as the national language. Standard Chinese is the official language of the People's Republic of China and Taiwan and one of the four official languages of Singapore. It is used as one of the working languages of the United Nations. It is also one of the most frequently used varieties of Chinese among Chinese diaspora communities internationally. Topic. Name The English word, Mandarin, from Portuguese Mandarin, from Malay Mentari, from Sanskrit Mantran, meaning, minister or counselor, originally meant an official of the Ming and Qing empires. Since their native varieties were often mutually unintelligible, these officials communicated using a Koine language based on various northern varieties. When Jesuit missionaries learned this standard language in the 16th century, they called it Mandarin, from its Chinese name Guanhua, Guanhua Guanhua or language of the officials. In everyday English, Mandarin refers to standard Chinese, which is often called simply Chinese. Standard Chinese is based on the particular Mandarin dialect spoken in Beijing, with some lexical and syntactic influence from other Mandarin dialects. It is the official spoken language of the People's Republic of China PRC, the de facto official language of the Republic of China ROC, Taiwan, and one of the four official languages of the Republic of Singapore. It also functions as the language of instruction in mainland China and in Taiwan. It is one of the six official languages of the United Nations, under the name Chinese. Chinese speakers refer to the modern standard language as Patonghua, Pu Tonghua, Pu Tonghua literally, common speech, in mainland China. Guoyu, Guoyu, Guoyu literally, national language, in Taiwan, or Huayu, Huayu, Huayu literally, Hua language, Chinese language in Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia and Philippines, but not as Guanhua. Linguists use the term Mandarin to refer to the diverse group of dialects spoken in northern and southwestern China, which Chinese linguists call Guanhua. The alternative term Beifanghua, Beifanghua, Beifanghua or northern dialects is used less and less among Chinese linguists. By extension, the term Old Mandarin or Early Mandarin is used by linguists to refer to the northern dialects recorded in materials from the Yuan dynasty. Native speakers who are not academic linguists may not recognize that the variants they speak are classified in linguistics as members of Mandarin, or so-called northern dialects, in a broader sense. Within Chinese social or cultural discourse, there is not a common Mandarin identity based on language, rather, there are strong regional identities centered on individual dialects because of the wide geographical distribution and cultural diversity of their speakers. Speakers of forms of Mandarin other than the standard typically refer to the variety they speak by a geographic name, 
for example Sichuan dialect, Hebei dialect or Northeastern dialect, all being regarded as distinct from the standard language. History The hundreds of modern local varieties of Chinese developed from regional variants of Old Chinese and Middle Chinese. Traditionally, seven major groups of dialects have been recognized. Aside from Mandarin, the other six are Wu, Gan, and Shang in central China, and Min, Hakka, and Yu on the southeast coast. The Language Atlas of China 1987 distinguishes three further groups, Jin split from Mandarin, Weizhou in the Weizhou region of Anhui and Zhejiang, and Pinghua in Guangxi and Yunnan. Topic. Old Mandarin After the fall of the Northern Song and during the reign of the Jin and Yuan Mongol dynasties in northern China, a common speech developed based on the dialects of the North China Plain around the capital, a language referred to as Old Mandarin. New genres of vernacular literature were based on this language, including verse, drama and story forms, such as the Ku and Sanchu poetry. The rhyming conventions of the new verse were codified in a rhyme dictionary called the Zhang Yuan Yinyan 1324. A radical departure from the rhyme table tradition that had evolved over the previous centuries, this dictionary contains a wealth of information on the phonology of Old Mandarin. Further sources are the Fags Pa script based on the Tibetan alphabet, which was used to write several of the languages of the Mongol Empire, including Chinese, and the Mungu Zian, a rhyme dictionary based on Fags Pa. The rhyme books differ in some details, but overall show many of the features characteristic of modern Mandarin dialects, such as the reduction and disappearance of final plosives and the reorganization of the Middle Chinese tones. In Middle Chinese, initial stops and affricates showed a three way contrast between tenuous, voiceless aspirated, and voiced consonants. There were four tones, with the fourth, or entering tone, a check tone comprising syllables ending in plosives. P, T, or K. Syllables with voiced initials tended to be pronounced with a lower pitch, and by the late Tang dynasty, each of the tones had split into two registers conditioned by the initials. When voicing was lost in all languages except the Wu subfamily, this distinction became phonemic and the system of initials and tones was rearranged differently in each of the major groups. The Zhang Yuan Yin Yin shows the typical Mandarin four tone system resulting from a split of the even. Tone and loss of the entering tone, with its syllables distributed across the other tones though their different origin is marked in the dictionary. Similarly, voiced plosives and affricates have become voiceless aspirates in the even tone and voiceless non-aspirates in others, another distinctive Mandarin development. However, the language still retained a final M, which has merged with N in modern dialects, and initial voiced fricatives. It also retained the distinction between velars and alveolar sibilants in palatal environments, which later merged in most Mandarin dialects to yield a palatal series rendered J, Q and X in pinyin. The flourishing vernacular literature of the period also shows distinctively Mandarin vocabulary and syntax, though some, such as the third-person pronoun ta, ta can be traced back to the Tang dynasty. Topic. Vernacular literature Until the early 20th century, formal writing and even much poetry and fiction was done in literary Chinese, which was modeled on the classics of the Warring States period and the Han Dynasty. Over time, the various spoken varieties diverged greatly from literary Chinese, which was learned and composed as a special language. Preserved from the sound changes that affected the various spoken varieties, its economy of expression was greatly valued. For example, yi yi, wing is unambiguous in written Chinese, but has over 75 homophones in standard Chinese. The literary language was less appropriate for recording materials that were meant to be reproduced in oral presentations, materials such as plays and grist for the professional storyteller's mill. From at least the Yuan dynasty, plays that recounted the subversive tales of China's Robin Hoods to the Ming dynasty novels such as Water Margin, on down to the Qing dynasty novel Dream of the Red Chamber and beyond, there developed a literature in written vernacular Chinese, Bai Hua Bai Hua Bai Hua. In many cases, this written language reflected Mandarin varieties, and since pronunciation differences were not conveyed in this written form, this tradition had a unifying force across all the Mandarin-speaking regions and beyond. Hu Xi, a pivotal figure of the first half of the 20th century, wrote an influential and perceptive study of this literary tradition, entitled Baihua Wen Shuizhai, 
A History of Vernacular Literature Topic: Koine of the Late Empire Until the mid-20th century, most Chinese people living in many parts of South China spoke only their local variety. As a practical measure, officials of the Ming and Qing dynasties carried out the administration of the empire using a common language based on Mandarin varieties, known as Guanhua. Knowledge of this language was thus essential for an official career, but it was never formally defined. Officials varied widely in their pronunciation. In 1728, the Yangzheng Emperor, unable to understand the accents of officials from Guangdong and Fujian, issued a decree requiring the governors of those provinces to provide for the teaching of proper pronunciation. Although the resulting academies for correct pronunciation were short-lived, the decree did spawn a number of textbooks that give some insight into the ideal pronunciation. Common features included Loss of the Middle Chinese voiced initials except for V Merger of M finals with N The characteristic Mandarin four-tone system in open syllables, but retaining a final glottal stop in entering tone syllables Retention of the distinction between palatalized velars and dental affricates, the source of the spellings Peking and Tientsin for modern Beijing and Tianjin. As the last two of these features indicate, this language was a koine based on dialects spoken in the Nanjing area, though not identical to any single dialect. This form remained prestigious long after the capital moved to Beijing in 1421, though the speech of the new capital emerged as a rival standard. As late as 1815, Robert Morrison based the first English Chinese dictionary on this koine as the standard of the time, though he conceded that the Beijing dialect was gaining in influence. By the middle of the 19th century, the Beijing dialect had become dominant and was essential for any business with the imperial court. Topic: <laughs> Standard Chinese. In the early years of the Republic of China, intellectuals of the new culture movement, such as Hu Shi and Chen Dushou, successfully campaigned for the replacement of literary Chinese as the written standard by written vernacular Chinese, which was based on northern dialects. A parallel priority was the definition of a standard national language simplified Chinese, Guo Yu traditional Chinese, Guo Yu pinyin, Guo Yu, Wade Giles, Kuo squared Yu cubed. After much dispute between proponents of northern and southern dialects and an abortive attempt at an artificial pronunciation, the National Language Unification Commission finally settled on the Beijing dialect in 1932. The People's Republic, founded in 1949, retained this standard, calling it Putonghua simplified Chinese, Putonghua traditional Chinese, Putonghua literally, common speech. Some 54% of speakers of Mandarin varieties could understand the standard language in the early 1950s, rising to 91% in 1984. Nationally, the proportion understanding the standard rose from 41% to 90% over the same period. The national language is now used in education, the media, and formal occasions in both the PRC and the ROC, but not in Hong Kong and Macau. This standard can now be spoken intelligibly by most younger people in mainland China and Taiwan with various regional accents. In Hong Kong and Macau, because of their colonial and linguistic history, the sole language of education, the media, formal speech and everyday life remains the local Cantonese. Mandarin is now common and taught in many schools but still has yet to gain traction with the local population. In Mandarin-speaking areas such as Sichuan and Chongqing, the local dialect is the native tongue of most of the population. The era of mass education in Standard Chinese has not erased these regional differences, and people may be either diglossic or speak the Standard language with a notable accent. From an official point of view, the PRC and ROC governments maintain their own forms of the Standard under different names. Technically, both Patonghua and Guoyu base their phonology on the Beijing accent, though Patonghua also takes some elements from other sources. Comparison of dictionaries produced in the two areas will show that there are few substantial differences. However, both versions of school standard Chinese are often quite different from the Mandarin varieties that are spoken in accordance with regional habits, and neither is wholly identical to the Beijing dialect. Patonghua and Guoyu also have some differences from the Beijing dialect in vocabulary, grammar, and pragmatics. 
The written forms of Standard Chinese are also essentially equivalent, although simplified characters are used in China, Singapore and Malaysia, while people in Hong Kong, Macau and Taiwan generally use traditional characters. Geographic distribution and dialects Most Han Chinese living in northern and southwestern China are native speakers of a dialect of Mandarin. The North China Plain provided few barriers to migration, leading to relative linguistic homogeneity over a wide area in northern China. In contrast, the mountains and rivers of southern China have spawned the other six major groups of Chinese varieties, with great internal diversity, particularly in Fujian. However, the varieties of Mandarin cover a huge area containing nearly a billion people. As a result, there are pronounced regional variations in pronunciation, vocabulary, and grammar, and many Mandarin varieties are not mutually intelligible. Most of northeastern China, except for Liaoning, did not receive significant settlements by Han Chinese until the 18th century, and as a result, the northeastern Mandarin dialects spoken there differ little from the Beijing dialect. The Manchu people of the area now speak these dialects exclusively, their native language is only maintained in northwestern Xinjiang, where Xibe, a modern dialect, is spoken. The frontier areas of northwest China were colonized by speakers of Mandarin dialects at the same time, and the dialects in those areas similarly closely resemble their relatives in the core Mandarin area. The southwest was settled early, but the population fell dramatically for obscure reasons in the 13th century, and did not recover until the 17th century. The dialects in this area are now relatively uniform. However, long-established cities even very close to Beijing, such as Tianjin, Baoding, Shenyang, and Dalian, have markedly different dialects. Unlike their compatriots on the southeast coast, few Mandarin speakers engaged in overseas emigration until the late 20th century, but there are now significant communities of them in cities across the world. Topic. Classification. The classification of Chinese dialects evolved during the 20th century, and many points remain unsettled. Early classifications tended to follow provincial boundaries or major geographical features. In 1936, Wang Li produced the first classification based on phonetic criteria, principally the evolution of Middle Chinese voiced initials. His Mandarin group included dialects of northern and southwestern China, as well as those of Hunan and northern Yangshi. Li Fang Kui's classification of 1937 distinguished the latter two groups as Shang and Gan, while splitting the remaining Mandarin dialects between northern, lower Yangtze and southwestern Mandarin groups. The widely accepted seven-group classification of Yuan Jawa in 1960 kept Shang and Gan separate, with Mandarin divided into northern, northwestern, southwestern and Zhangwai lower Yangtze subgroups. Of Yuan's four Mandarin subgroups, the northwestern dialects are the most diverse, particularly in the province of Shaanxi. The linguist Li Rong proposed that the northwestern dialects of Shaanxi and neighboring areas that retain a final glottal stop in the Middle Chinese entering tone plosive final category should constitute a separate top-level group called Jin. He used this classification in the Language Atlas of China 1987. Many other linguists continue to include these dialects in the Mandarin group, pointing out that the lower Yangtze dialects also retain the glottal stop. The southern boundary of the Mandarin area, with the central Wu, Gan and Shang groups, is weakly defined due to centuries of diffusion of northern features. Many border varieties have a mixture of features that make them difficult to classify. The boundary between southwestern Mandarin and Shang is particularly weak, and in many early classifications the two were not separated. Zhou Zhenhe and Yu Ruji include the new Shang dialects within southwestern Mandarin, treating only the more conservative old Shang dialects as a separate group. The Weizhou dialects have features of both Mandarin and Wu, and have been assigned to one or other of these groups or treated as separate by various authors. Li Rong and the Language Atlas of China treated it as a separate top level group, but this remains controversial. The Language Atlas of China calls the remainder of Mandarin a supergroup, divided into eight dialect groups distinguished by their treatment of the Middle Chinese entering tone. See tones below. Northeastern Mandarin, spoken in Manchuria except the Liaodong Peninsula. This dialect is closely related to Standard Chinese, with little variation in lexicon and very few tonal differences. 
Beijing Mandarin in Beijing and environs such as Chengdu and northern Hebei, as well as some areas of recent large-scale immigration, such as northern Xinjiang. The Beijing dialect forms the basis of standard Chinese. This classification is controversial, as a number of researchers view Beijing and northeastern Mandarin as a single dialect group. Jilu Mandarin, spoken in Hebei, Ji, and Shandong, Liu. Provinces except the Shandong Peninsula, including Tianjin dialect. Tones and vocabulary are markedly different. In general, there is substantial intelligibility with Beijing Mandarin. Jiaolao Mandarin, spoken in Shandong Jiaodong, and Liaodong peninsulas. Very noticeable tonal changes, different in flavor from Ji Lu Mandarin, but with more variance. There is moderate intelligibility with Beijing. Central Plains Mandarin, spoken in Henan Province, the central parts of Shaanxi in the Yellow River Valley, eastern Gansu and southern Xinjiang. There are significant phonological differences, with partial intelligibility with Beijing. The Dungan language spoken in Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan belongs to this group. Dungan speakers such as the poet Iasyr Shivaza have reported being understood by speakers of the Beijing dialect, but not vice versa. Lanyan Mandarin, spoken in central and western Gansu province with capital Lanzhou and Ningxia Autonomous Region with capital Yinchuan, as well as northern Xinjiang. Lower Yangtze Mandarin or Zhongwai, spoken in the parts of Jiangsu and Anhui on the north bank of the Yangtze, as well as some areas on the south bank, such as Nanjing in Jiangsu, Zhujiang in Yangshi, etc. There are significant phonological and lexical changes to varying degrees, and intelligibility with Beijing is limited. Lower Yangtze Mandarin has been significantly influenced by Wu Chinese. Southwestern Mandarin, spoken in the provinces of Hubei, Sichuan, Guizhou, Yunnan, and the Mandarin-speaking areas of Hunan, Guangxi and southern Shaanxi. There are sharp phonological, lexical, and tonal changes, and intelligibility with Beijing is limited to varying degrees. The atlas also includes several unclassified Mandarin dialects spoken in scattered pockets across southeastern China, such as Nanping in Fujian and Dongfang on Hainan. Another Mandarin variety of uncertain classification is apparently Giyama, recorded in the 19th century in the Tibetan foothills, who the Chinese apparently did not recognize as Chinese. Topic. Phonology Syllables consist maximally of an initial consonant, a glide, a vowel, a final, and tone. Not every syllable that is possible according to this rule actually exists in Mandarin, as there are rules prohibiting certain phonemes from appearing with others, and in practice there are only a few hundred distinct syllables. Phonological features that are generally shared by the Mandarin dialects include the palatalization of velar consonants and alveolar sibilants when they occur before palatal glides. One syllable contains maximum four phonemes maximum three vowels and no consonant cluster. The disappearance of final stop consonants and m, although in many lower Yangtze Mandarin and Jin Chinese dialects, an echo of the final stops is preserved as a glottal stop. The presence of retroflex consonants although these are absent in many southwestern and northeastern Mandarin dialects. The historical devoicing of stops and sibilants also common to most non-Mandarin varieties. Topic. Initials The maximal inventory of initials of a Mandarin dialect is as follows, with bracketed pinyin spellings given for those present in the standard language. Most Mandarin-speaking areas distinguish between the retroflex initials from the apical sibilants, tsts, though they often have a different distribution than in the standard language. In most dialects of the southeast and southwest the retroflex initials have merged with the alveolar sibilants, so that g becomes z, chi becomes c, and xi becomes c. The alveolo-palatal sibilants, tt, are the result of merger between the historical palatalized velars, kj, kj, xj, and palatalized alveolar sibilants, tsj, tsj, sj. In about 20% of dialects, the alveolar sibilants fail to palatalize, remaining separate from the alveolo-palatal initials. The unique pronunciation used in Peking opera falls into this category. On the other side, in some dialects of eastern Shandong, the velar initials have failed to palatalize. Many southwestern Mandarin dialects mix f and xw, substituting one for the other in some or all cases. For example, fei fei to fly, and wei xwei. Dust, 
may be merged in these areas. In some dialects, initial l and n are not distinguished. In southwestern Mandarin, these sounds usually merge to n, in lower Yangtze Mandarin, they usually merge to l. People in many Mandarin speaking areas may use different initial sounds where Beijing uses initial r. Common variants include j, l, n, and, with. Some dialects have initial corresponding to the zero initial of the standard language. This initial is the result of a merger of the Middle Chinese zero initial with and Many dialects of Northwestern and Central Plains Mandarin have PFPFFV, where Beijing has 2TWW, with. Examples include PFU, pig, for standard Zhu, Ju, Tu, Fei, water, for standard Shui, Shui, Wei, Va, soft, for standard Ruan, Ruan, Wan. Topic. Finals Most Mandarin dialects have three medial glides, J, with and spelled I, U and U in pinyin, though their incidence varies. The medial, with, is lost after apical initials in several areas. Thus southwestern Mandarin has, te, right, where the standard language has dui, tui. Southwestern Mandarin also has kai kixai in some words where the standard has jia qie xie tjt jj. This is a stereotypical feature of southwestern Mandarin, since it is so easily noticeable. E.g. hai shu for standard xie, gai street for standard jia. Mandarin dialects typically have relatively few vowels. Syllabic fricatives, as in standard Z and G, are common in Mandarin dialects, though they also occur elsewhere. The Middle Chinese off glides, J, and, with are generally preserved in Mandarin dialects, yielding several diphthongs and triphthongs in contrast to the larger sets of monophthongs common in other dialect groups and some widely scattered Mandarin dialects. The Middle Chinese coda per meter, was still present in Old Mandarin, but has merged with, N, in the modern dialects. In some areas, especially the southwest, final has also merged with n. This is especially prevalent in the rhyme pairs n, 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 and in ing, in i. As a result, jin, gold, and jing, capital, merge in those dialects. The Middle Chinese final stops have undergone a variety of developments in different Mandarin dialects. See tones below. In Lower Yangtze dialects and some Northwestern dialects, they have merged as a final glottal stop. In other dialects they have been lost, with varying effects on the vowel. As a result, Beijing Mandarin and Northeastern Mandarin underwent more vowel mergers than many other varieties of Mandarin. For example, R coloring, a characteristic feature of Mandarin, works quite differently in the southwest. Whereas Beijing dialect generally removes only a final J, or N, when adding the rhotic final R, in the southwest the R replaces nearly the entire rhyme. Topic. Tones In general, no two Mandarin-speaking areas have exactly the same set of tone values, but most Mandarin-speaking areas have very similar tone distribution. For example, the dialects of Jinan, Chengdu, Xi'an and so on all have four tones that correspond quite well to the Beijing dialect tones of 55, 35, 214, and 51. The exception to this rule lies in the distribution of syllables formerly ending in a stop consonant, which are treated differently in different dialects of Mandarin. Middle Chinese stops and affricates had a three-way distinction between tenuous, voiceless aspirate and voiced or breathy voiced consonants. In Mandarin dialects the voicing is generally lost, yielding voiceless aspirates in syllables with a Middle Chinese level tone and non-aspirates in other syllables. Of the four tones of Middle Chinese, the level, rising and departing tones have also developed into four modern tones in a uniform way across Mandarin dialects. The Middle Chinese level tone has split into two registers, conditioned on voicing of the Middle Chinese initial, while rising tone syllables with voiced obstruent initials have shifted to the departing tone. The following examples from the standard language illustrate the regular development common to Mandarin dialects recall that pinyin D denotes a non-aspirate, T, while T denotes an aspirate, T. In traditional Chinese phonology, syllables that ended in a stop in Middle Chinese i.e., P, T, or, K, were considered to belong to a special category known as the entering tone. 
These final stops have disappeared in most Mandarin dialects, with the syllables distributed over the other four modern tones in different ways in the various Mandarin subgroups. In the Beijing dialect that underlies the standard language, syllables beginning with original voiceless consonants were redistributed across the four tones in a completely random pattern. For example, the three characters G G G, all T S J E K in Middle Chinese, William H Baxter's transcription, are now pronounced G G and G respectively. Older dictionaries such as Matthew's Chinese English Dictionary mark characters whose pronunciation formerly ended with a stop with a superscript 5. However, this tone number is more commonly used for syllables that always have a neutral tone. See below. In Lower Yangtze dialects, a minority of southwestern dialects, e.g., Minjiang and Jin Chinese, sometimes considered non-Mandarin, former final stops were not deleted entirely, but were reduced to a glottal stop. This includes the dialect of Nanjing on which the postal romanization was based, it transcribes the glottal stop as a trailing H. This development is shared with Wu Chinese and is thought to represent the pronunciation of Old Mandarin. In line with traditional Chinese phonology, dialects such as Lower Yangtze and Minjiang are thus said to have five tones instead of four. However, modern linguistics considers these syllables as having no phonemic tone at all. Although the system of tones is common across Mandarin dialects, their realization as tone contours varies widely. Asterisk dialects in and around the Nantong area typically have many more than four tones, due to influence from the neighboring Wu dialects. Mandarin dialects frequently employ neutral tones in the second syllables of words, creating syllables whose tone contour is so short and light that it is difficult or impossible to discriminate. These atonal syllables also occur in non-Mandarin dialects, but in many southern dialects the tones of all syllables are made clear. Vocabulary There are more polysyllabic words in Mandarin than in all other major varieties of Chinese except Shanghainese. This is partly because Mandarin has undergone many more sound changes than have southern varieties of Chinese, and has needed to deal with many more homophones. New words have been formed by adding affixes such as lao, lao z, z e, r, er er and tou, tu tu or by compounding, e.g. by combining two words of similar meaning as in kongmong, kongmang made from elements meaning hurried and busy. A distinctive feature of southwestern Mandarin is its frequent use of noun reduplication, which is hardly used in Beijing. In Sichuan, one hears bao bao, bao handbag, where Beijing uses baoer. Bao there are also a small number of words that have been polysyllabic since Old Chinese, such as hudie, hudie butterfly. The singular pronouns in Mandarin are wo, i, ni, ni or nai, yu, nin, nin yu formal and ta, ta, ta or ta, he, she, it, with men, men, men added for the plural. Further, there is a distinction between the plural first-person pronoun zanmen, zanmen, zanmen which is inclusive of the listener, and women, women, women which may be exclusive of the listener. Dialects of Mandarin agree with each other quite consistently on these pronouns. While the first and second person singular pronouns are cognate with forms in other varieties of Chinese, the rest of the pronominal system is a Mandarin innovation e.g., Shanghainese has nan nong yu, and yi yi he, she. Because of contact with Mongolian and Manchurian peoples, Mandarin especially the northeastern varieties has some loanwords from these languages not present in other varieties of Chinese, such as hutong hud, ali. Southern Chinese varieties have borrowed from Thai, Austroasiatic, and Austronesian languages. There are also many Chinese words came from foreign languages such as Gaurfu, Gaurfu from Golf, Bijini, Bijini from Bikini, Hanbao Bao, Hanbao Bao from Hamburger. In general, the greatest variation occurs in slang, in kinship terms, in names for common crops and domesticated animals, for common verbs and adjectives, and other such everyday terms. The least variation occurs in formal vocabulary terms dealing with science, law, or government. Topic: <laughs> Grammar. Chinese varieties of all periods have traditionally been considered prime examples of analytic languages, relying on word order and particles instead of inflection or affixes to provide grammatical information such as person, number, tense, mood, or case. 
Although modern varieties, including the Mandarin dialects, use a small number of particles in a similar fashion to suffixes, they are still strongly analytic. The basic word order of subject verb object is common across Chinese dialects, but there are variations in the order of the two objects of ditransitive sentences. In northern dialects, the indirect object precedes the direct object, as in English, for example, in the standard Chinese sentence. In southern dialects, as well as many southwestern and lower Yangtze dialects, the objects occur in the reverse order. Most varieties of Chinese use post verbal particles to indicate aspect, but the particles used vary. Most Mandarin dialects use the particle la, la to indicate the perfective aspect and j, jj for the progressive aspect. Other Chinese varieties tend to use different particles, e.g., Cantonese zo tu zuo and gan tu jin, jin respectively. The experiential aspect particle guo, guo guo is used more widely, except in southern Min, the subordinative particle de, de is characteristic of Mandarin dialects. Some southern dialects, and a few lower Yangtze dialects, preserve an older pattern of subordination without a marking particle, while in others a classifier fulfills the role of the Mandarin particle, especially in conversational Chinese, sentence final particles alter the inherent meaning of a sentence. Like much vocabulary, particles can vary a great deal with regards to the locale. For example, the particle ma, ma which is used in most northern dialects to denote obviousness or contention, is replaced by yo, yo in southern usage. Some characters in Mandarin can be combined with others to indicate a particular meaning just like prefix and suffix in English. For example, the suffix er which means the person who is doing the action, e.g. teacher, person who teaches. In Mandarin the character shi functions the same thing, it is combined with jiao, which means teach, to form the word teacher. List of Chinese prefix and suffix Topic. See also Chinese dictionary Transcription into Chinese characters Written Chinese Languages of China List of varieties of Chinese Linguistic Atlas of Chinese Dialects Comparison of Cantonese and Standard Chinese List of languages by number of native speakers Notes References Works cited Further reading Topic. Historical Western language texts Topic. External links Tones in Mandarin dialects, comprehensive tone comparison charts for 523 Mandarin dialects. Compiled by James Campbell, Internet Archive Mirror.